Welcome to the second part of this tutorial, in which we will cover, the actual step-by-step -step modeling, of this Tatlan sofa. Before we start to model, let's take a look to how this shape is composed. As you can see, I divided its volumes in several subcomponents to manage it easier. We will start from the seating, then we will create the backrest, and finally, we'll generate the framework and feet. As you can see, the feet are instances of the same component, so we'll model just a single foot once. You know, for each of these components, we want to create the main shape at first, and then, we will refine it, adding those details, such as control loops to chamfer edges, and also this topology here, to cap the upper part of the seating. And finally, we will add some weight to these control loops, just to fine tune the appearance of the subdivided mesh. Now, let's resume the main basic principles, which we will follow to create our meshes. Let's see, first of all, what's the basic behavior of Cat Clark algorithm in sub D. Let's draw a shape and group it. Then toggle subdivision on. And activate quad face select tool, so you can see the actual subdivided quads. As you can see, at iteration level 1. Sub D splits the quad in four smaller quads, and it's connecting midpoints of each edge of the original quad with its center. While the original vertex are being pushed inward. If you increase to iteration level 2, you will see that, each of this four quad, is split into four smaller quads and also the outer vertices are pushed inward a bit more. And so on. The more iterations, the more smoothing. Until it looks like a circle. But, what will it does, if I add some volume to it? As you can see it does pretty much the same in 3D. It just split faces in 4 and pushes vertices inward. At each iteration. Until, you see, you got something similar to a sphere thing. Now that I've got some smooth mesh, I can use the crease to lin sub D, to add this sort of attraction weight to the original edges. As you can see, this crease value can be adjusted from a value of 0 to be completely smooth, to a value of 1 to be 100% sharp, and if you hold down shift key, it also works on multiple edges at once. You can also double click a face, to select the set of connected edges and crease them. And you can use this tool to select vertices. Also the crease value of a vertex, may range from 0, to be completely rounded off, to a maximum value of 1 which basically puts it back to its original position on the control cage. You can also select edges and vertices at the same time. And you can see in this case I'm putting the whole edge back into its start position on the control cage. So, the crease tool is very powerful to control the pinching of the mesh, but that's not the only way to control the flow. Let's create another basic subdivided object to demonstrate this. I select this face from the control mesh, and offset its contours, and then run split donuts. To generate a new control loop. Let me explain a bit better, how split donuts works. First of all you need to select a donut face. A donut face is just a face with an interior hole, and the border of this interior hole, should have the exact same number of segment as the outer border. In this case our Ngon has got four edges, both for interior and exterior loops. So it's a working face for split donuts. If you run the plugin on this sort of faces, it connects the corresponding vertices creating ring of nice edges. So you can see. This freshly generated topology, works very nice with quad face tools. And it works very nice with sub D2. You may notice how this control loop, tends to flatten the original top face and creates a sort of chamfer at its contour. Actually, in a very similar fashion to how the crease tool works. So, what's the best method to use to control this edge pinching? The answer is probably, a combination of both of them. As you can see I can insert a control loop, like we just did in our mesh, and then select it, and use the crease tools, to weight its attraction power. So, you can combine the attraction force of the control loops, and the attraction force of creased edges to add detail, control the flow, and create more and more interesting shapes. And this is exactly what I'm going to do, to define the shape of this sofa. 
Let's start by activating orthographic top view to trace the main shape of the seating. I'm using this cat mole spline tool from Frito's Bezier Splines plugin, but that's not mandatory. You may use other plugins or sketch up built in tools such lines and arcs. Or maybe, if you use a pen and a graphic tablet, you may prefer to use the inbuilt freehand tool. This is not important, is completely up to you, because in this early stage, you just want to trace the overall shape. And you don't need to be that much accurate for now. I personally prefer Frito splines, because if you do some mistakes, or simply want to tweak it after its creation, you see, you get some nice options, and you can edit the spline by moving control points. Or typing a different number of segments in the VCB. Or also by adding new control points and so on. Okay, this spline describes pretty nice the shape, but as you can see, that's made out of 120 segments, and as we said before, we want to keep things as much low poly as we can. So, I will use another tool from Frito Spline which is called Polyline Segmenter. Basically what it does, is to sample some evenly spaced points, from the original path, and connect them into a new polyline. And that's exactly what we need, we want to keep vertices evenly distributed, along the very same shape we traced, but we want to dramatically reduce their total amount. I think a value of 15, will be perfect for our seating. So we get this nice polyline. Obviously, that was built inside our original spline, but we said that Catmull Clark subdivision, will push these vertices inward furthermore, when we will be smoothing it. So what we want to do, now, is to offset this a little bit, so that's just about tangent to the outside of our reference curve. And you can erase the original polyline. I can now activate vertex tools. And select individual vertices, to tweak their position, by dragging those arrows on the gizmo. I'm just tweaking this, a little bit, but again you don't need to be 100% accurate, because we are modeling low poly, so that we can refine this gauge a little further, when we will see how does it smooth. Finally, I select these two vertices at the open ends, and this time I use this handle to scale them to zero along Y axis, so they are collinear. And now, with my regular pen tool, I can trace this line along red axis, to close the shape. Group this geometry and from the front view. With the help of your reference image, you want pretty much move it, constrain it to the Z axis. I think that's pretty close. Now we want to create the main control loops all around the border. To do this I activate my group for editing. And I activate the offset tool. And offset this contour a couple of time. You can see, I did my second offset a little more distant and that's okay for now. Then you can delete this face. Now, what happens if I try to smooth those loops? You can see the topology is completely messed and there are all of this nice artifacts everywhere. That's because they are N-Gons and they really don't work well with Cadmel Clark. But, as I showed you before, this is the perfect case to use Split Donuts tool. Now, you can see how everything is quad, so if you toggle Sub-D on, you get those nice smooth face loops. Maybe a bit too much smoothing in some corners, but that's okay for now. The next thing we want to do, is to start adding a bit of volume to it. We want to select the outer loop and use vertex tools to move it down and drive the rounded edge of the seating. So, pick the loop with your loop select tool. Then, activate the vertex tools gizmo, and go to the front view. Move your loop a bit downward, to match the rounded edge. And go back to perspective view. The next thing I want to show you, is how to create those vertical control loops, to pinch these sharper corners of the sofa. So, select this ring here. We can introduce this other tool from Quad Face Tools, which is called Connect Edge Tool. This trigger this little box, to select a couple of parameters, that you can edit into your VCB. The first parameter is Segments. As you can see, with a default value of 1, 
It creates a new loop, which is previewed in green. But you can change that value from VCB input. So, in this case, I can type 2. Then you will see the two loops in preview. The second parameters, pinch, is to set the distance. If you try with the default value of 0, you will see the new loops are evenly spaced from the borders. But if you type in a value of 100, you can merely see them. In fact they are overlapping with the boundary of the ring. So, you can see is a sort of percentage. And in this case I want to set it to a pretty high value, because I want it to be very close to this border. I think 90 may work good for now. Then we want to do the same things also on this other two rings. So I select them, and open the connect edge tool again. If you try to play a bit with the pinching, you will see that the loops are sliding. But actually this rings are shorter, than the one before, and remember, it's a percentage, so we may want to value a bit lower than before. 85 should be fine. If you toggle sub D, you can notice that with these extra loops, we have successfully pinched the corners. But you can also see we introduced this unwanted pinching here. So we should remove the unnecessary loops to fix this. To do this, I will use the remove loops tools, from quad face tools. You can see this works in a by deleting the loop in a not destructive way, because it rebuilds the quad topology in real time, making it really easy to clean up the mesh. You may also notice, that you don't need to select the whole loop to remove. You can just select a single edge from the unwanted loop. And then run the tool to remove the complete loop from start to finish. Okay. I'll remove this other loop, and I think this could be fine. In fact, if you try to turn on sub D, the mesh is now smoothing pretty nice. Okay, now we can go on, and add some more volume, but first of all, when you work with closed volumes, it is always a good modeling practice to orient your positive normal toward the outside of the mesh, and the negative ones should be pointing inside. So let's select all faces and reverse them. Now, I want to build the cap topology for the upper part of the seating. Before we actually do this, we will give a quick look to my previous example sofa. You can notice that I created this long edge loop to divide it into two face loops, and I joined it with the outside borders to create those quad faces. You could do this completely manually, but I will show you some trick, to speed up this kind of operation. I select the border loop and generate a face for this. I can check in my entity info panel, that I got 18 total edges, so I could manually count 9 edges, from about the middle of this shape. To mark out the vertices I will connect to create the main cut. But I will use this path select tool from Dale's Martin Sketch UV to speed up the process. This tool allows you to quickly drag a selection of edges. So I can highlight my 9 segments. And now I can see where exactly I want my cut to be. Now. I want to manually mark my pole quads, the ones at the end of the loops. For both ends. And now you can temporarily delete all of this. What I want to do now is to quickly divide this big engon in a grid of quad that should be as even as possible. To do this, I will use split sausages, which is quite similar to split donuts. But it works on sausages faces, instead of donuts ones. Let me quickly show how split sausages works. Let's draw a sausage face. A sausage face is a engon in which there are two sets of edges, of the same number, more or less matching each other. Divided by two segments which are the ends of a potential ring. In order to work, Split Sausages needs you to select the face and one of these two edges you could use as the start of the ring. And you see, it automatically generates that ring for you. And you can check, that all of this, are valid quads. Working with quad face selection tools. Okay, so let's delete this. So, because I checked before that this face has two borders with the same number of edges, I can select the ingon together with this edge, as a seed for the ring, and run split sausages on it, to generate the ring. Then I can use the grow ring button, to include the other two segments, and run insert loop, from quad face tools. 
so that is nicely flowing, at an average distance from the borders. And finally, I can manually connect this vertices, to complete the topology cap. Now I completed the generation of this grid which is completely built up from quads. So I can test my sub D result again. And you see. That's smoothing really nice. What I want to do now, is to add new topology, to create the main thickness for the seating. To do this I go to my front view. Select the lower loop and activate the vertex tools gizmo. Now I can drag down the blue arrow, holding the control key, to extrude a new quad face loop. You can check your reference image, and drag it down, until you achieve about one half of the actual thickness. You can see that this object is quite symmetrical, so I can model just one half of it, and then, when I'm done, I can copy mirror this upper part, to close the lower end. But before I do this, I just want to tweak the pinching another little bit. As we said in the previous example, we can add some weight to those control loops to further refine the flow of the mesh. So I'll select the first segment, from each of this control loops at the corners. And then use grow loop to extend the selection. And now I use the crease tool to get some more pinching here. Finally I can groove my loop selection once more, to add a bit of creasing here. So, now I select individually some edges, to refine them. This last operation, really won't modify the shape that much. But I do this just to get a more even and clean topology. Okay, just a last touch here. And now I think is pretty much ready. Just let's check, how it looks at a lower subdivision level. Because sometime you can get unexpected results if you don't care about this. Okay, it look pretty decent. And if you rise your iteration up to 3. I would say it subdivides great. Okay, let's toggle off sub D for now. So, now that the top cap is ready, we can select all of its geometry, and activate the mirror tool from TIG. Pick a point from the lower loop, as an origin for the mirror. Then pick the red axis. And then the green axis. And commit the mirror. Choose to not delete original selection, and here you go. What I want to delete, is probably this loop because I don't need it anymore. So that's the subdivided mesh, and I would say that's enough for the purposes of this tutorial, but usually when you are actually modeling at your best, you should now try to refine it, more and more. And you can, at any time, turn off sub D, use the quad face tools to quickly select the geometry. Or use the vertex tools gizmo to edit it in an organic way. and jump back again to the subdivided mesh, until you are happy with its look. That's pretty much everything for this tutorial about the seating, so thank you for watching, and see you in the next part, in which we will model the backrest.